Yo, 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 we live on location. We here in Orlando, city beautiful. I got the blackest one, and we coming to you live on location with a special, special guest, man. We got some of that 90s, real, real OG basketball in the building. We got the original team member from the Jordan brand when it all yeah. started off, man. Multiple time, all-star, big time, big time, Olympian, all that. We got Mr. Vin Baker, our big bro in the yeah. building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First of all, bro, we appreciate you uh, coming on the show, our, our Jordan brand brother. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, our guy, man, uh, just thank you for uh, giving us the time with you, bro. Thanks for having me, dude. I appreciate you having me here, man. I'm honored to be here. Presented by Sleeper. When you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? <laughs> um, it was a few people. But I, I would say, like, I would say Carl Malone was my first real introduction. Um, oh, the, but the thing about Carl was, like, it was a side screen, a roll, and the cross, the, the, mm -hmm. the cross screen action. So you, he got forty, and you never really, you felt like, what just happened? <laughs> it was forty and fifteen. And I'm looking at the stats sheet, like he just had forty and fifteen. And about Utah, they run down the court and cross every <laughs> single time. Right. Then right. John Stockton sitting them strong little, yeah. little picks on you. Yeah, already, yeah, know? yeah. So and his arms is like. <laughs> yeah, and he, and he holding the screen too. It's not like the screen's set today. He really hitting you. So yeah. it, was, it was Carl, and I'll say my first introduction before Carl was Sean Kemp. Kemp. Kemp got Dang, me in the preseason. Man. It was. It was terrifying. It was everything that I imagined it was gonna be. It was it was in Milwaukee, but the rain was he was he came, he brought it. Oh, okay. So yeah. Rain man. Old Saybrook. Tell us about old Saybrook coming up. You said it wasn't really a a basketball community yeah. like that. Yeah, it was it wasn't a, a, a small town in Connecticut. Um my parents, you know, migrated from the south and, and moved to Connecticut just to okay. move to a different place and move from the south. So I grew up in Old Tabor, Connecticut, beautiful little town. And, um, you know, like I said, it wasn't a hotbed for basketball. Yeah. My parents were super strict. My dad was a pastor, is a pastor. And so it was school and, and church for me. And mm -hmm. so, um, but I had the passion for basketball. I love, you know, basketball like anybody else did. And, um, and just worked my way through, you know, the crevices and didn't really, I was a late bloomer. Yeah. Um, but I was passionate about the sport like anybody else. Who put the ball in your hand? Like, how you start? Because you, you say your pops is a pastor, and I know with the church, you got to run the church seven days <laughs> yeah. a week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But So who put the ball in your hand to make you start loving it? Or what you what did you see to make you start liking it? Yeah, so I watched it a lot. Like, I'm, I'm a 70s. I was born in the 70s, but I was like an 80s baby, like yeah. watching Dr. J, Magic, Bird, you know, watching them on, you know, there wasn't a lot of, you know, like like it is now, a ton of basketball on mm -hmm. TV. So you got the Lakers, the 76ers, the Celtics, you know, every Sunday. And so just sitting down in front of the TV, watching them made me passionate about it. I'm like, and it wasn't about being in the NBA. I just wanted to do what they did. It was what they did. I wanted to, you know, handle the ball like Magic, shoot like Bird, fly like Dr. J. So, um, and then of course, you know, MJ, when when MJ came uh, in the '90s, I wanted to be like all of them, man. So hmm. that's where it started. How was it when you started going to Florida for the summers? Like <laughs> when you started going to Florida for the summers, yeah. and you know, being in Connecticut where the basketball ain't really all that, to going to Florida where it's football, basketball, like they outside, weather yes. good. Yes. Like like how was that them summers for you? So shout out to Lake Wells, Florida. That's where I was born. <laughs> yeah, and that's where my family is, and. Um, you know, my cousins, my parents sent me home every summer back yeah. to Lake Wells. I was born in Lake Wells. So they sent me to Lake Wells with my grandmother every summer. And so when I was inside up north, but when I came home to Lake Wells, I was outside. Yeah. Right? And you know, it's football. This is a football state. And my cousins was tough. And um, so we used to go to the court and they used to, you know, just kick my behind all the time, man. Like hmm. until I got tough. And, yeah. um, but I, you know, they made me compete. Yeah. Um, they were stronger than me, faster than me. Um, I was only like six two, six three when I was younger. Yeah. I, I was, I grew late. My growth growth spurt came when I was like 
18, 19. Damn. Yeah. So, you know, I was like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, when I was 13 and 14. So my mm -hmm. growth spurt. So I was trying to do football. I was trying to do everything they was doing. But man, but they hardened me though. They toughened me yeah, up. They toughened you up. Um, and got me to a point where, you know, my passion for the sport, the fact that they were making me tough every summer, and then all I had to do was grow at that point. Tell us about uh, going to UConn camp. Every, oh, yeah. every every summer, where every time they threw a camp, like tell yeah. us tell us that. So it was, it was like again. I said I was a late bloomer, and so I was, I started going to. I went to UConn twice. My junior year, right before my junior year, and right before my senior year, and um, again there was more talent. There was better talent than me in Connecticut at the time, mm -hmm. but I was game. So I went there. Um, my junior right before my junior year, I got better. Um, you know, my sophomore year, I played JV. Mm -hmm. And then I came back after the UConn camp and play, averaged like 16 points, nine rebounds a game my junior how year. How tall were you your junior year? 6'6". Six, six. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was just still, my my body was aching. You know how, do you yeah. know how, the like, knees hurt, knees, knees eyes could slide, all that stuff. <laughs> right. My body was hurting for no reason. Yeah. And, um, but it helped me though. You know, like, again, I was game. And then by the time I went my, before my senior year, um, and that summer, I just got better, man, and and, and started dominating. I started feeling like dominance when I went there um, the did second time. Did you grow time. more between junior and senior year? I did, and I grew like an inch, like man. one more inch. I was like six seven my junior year, and then six seven my 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 senior year. But my growth spurt, the big one, came when I went. When I was a senior in high school. And then I was, I grew four inches going into my freshman year in college. Mm. So I was six seven and then six eleven. That was my big growth spurt. But it helped me because I, I was handling, you know what yeah, I mean? I was, like I was, I was growing wing. up, growing up like a guard in a wing. Yeah. So since you was a late bloomer, what was the college that you really wanted to go to? Man, being being in Connecticut, you know, I wanted to go to UConn. Yeah. And at the time, too, the University of Rhode Island was rolling, rolling. This was pre Lamar Odom, yeah. pre Catino. They were rolling. They had this dude named Kenny Green that was from um, Connecticut. That was a monster. They, they they had actually gone to the Sweet Sixteen my right before my senior year, mm. and so I took a visit there. But um, I really they didn't offer me a scholarship because again I wasn't I wasn't ready for that level at mm. the time. So it was Rhode Island and, and UConn. But but by the grace of God, man, I got a I got one offer, and that was from the University of Hartford. When I started really paying attention to your game, your your game wasn't a typical center game. Like mm -hmm. uh, to compare, I say Akeem, your mm -hmm. footwork, mm -hmm. like the way you play. When did that start getting in your game? When you got to college? Yeah, when I when I got to college, it was crazy because you know my freshman year I averaged four points a game, but then right. my sophomore year I averaged. 20 points a game. Yeah. And so going to a small school was a blessing to disguise because I got a chance to do everything. Yeah. Take the ball off the rim, dribble it up the court, work in the post. I got to do everything at the University of Hartford. So that's that's really where my footwork developed. And <clears throat> my junior and senior year, my junior year I was, I think, like 28.5 points a game and my senior year, like 28 a game. And so I was tripled and quadruple team and double team all the time in college. So it made me figure out how to, the how to use, because I was so desperate and thirsty to score. Yeah. It made me figure out how to beat double teams, how to beat triple teams, keep my dribble yeah. in the post, outside the post. So that's really where the footwork really developed. Because by the time I got to the league, my first two years, I was like, there's no way they guard me with one person. It was crazy yeah. to me. Right. They, the centers, the, the old traditional centers. Right. Seven foot, slow guys. Yeah, and physical. Just, just but strong, foot, but they couldn't right, move. Right, but my footwork, they were stronger than me, but my footwork was better. So, yeah, most yeah. definitely. How yeah. was it for you going from averaging, you know, four points and, you know, pretty much figuring out your body after growing like that. Then you get to your senior year and you at little old Connecticut, I mean Hartford, mm -hmm. but you got the, you know, the whole Sports Illustrated calling you the best kept secret. Yeah. How was that when you started getting that type of attention going from where you came from? It, it was crazy. It was crazy, Q, because at the time I, I knew what I was doing on at the University of Hartford, but I also knew that Chris Webber was out there. Right. Hardaway was out right. there. I, I, I was aware that I was doing damage, but I was doing it at a lower level. Lower level. Mm -hmm. But it kept me hungry though. 
Because yeah. I, I was like, those dudes are getting recognition. Um, they're at Michigan, they're at Memphis. Um, I felt it being called the nation's best, best kept secret was great for me and my college. But at the same time, I was at a place where mentally like this ain't it. Right. Yeah. There's more, like I really want national attention. Like, yeah. And to get the national attention, I'm gonna have to bring it to somebody nationally. I'm gonna have to bring yeah. it to C-Web. I'm gonna have to bring it to Juwan and all the best ones. Yeah. So I, I, as great as my college career was, I was very aware that there was another level of basketball player that I had yet to to accomplish and yet to go against. Mm -hmm. Like back in them days, like Streets and Smith and like the magazines, they was like yeah. they was like the social media these days. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? When you go viral, yeah. To hear that you about to be on Sports Illustrated, which by then Sports Illustrated had Magic, they <laughs> had all these these professional and these big time guys honor to do, even do the article. How was it when you first heard that call? I mean, it was it was super dope, man, because the the actual photo shoot had it it, it was all the athletes that were in the school. So they got all the athletes out yeah. of class. Oh, that's dope. At least the majority of them. Yeah. Some of them and to do this uh this one photo where everybody had their their finger over their mouth like shh, the yeah. nation's best kept secret. So it was kind of cool to have the whole university involved, have yeah. all of my fellow student athletes involved in. Uh, but again, D, like at the same time, I was so humble, man. Like I was happy that I was getting the attention, but I still, the basketball side of me was like, man, I gotta, Do I gotta more. prove this, Yeah, <laughs> right? I gotta, you know, I wasn't winning. You yeah. know, my junior year in, in, in um, college, I averaged 28.5 points a game, but we only won six games. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out how to to win too. It was the accolades were great. I was happy that I was getting the attention, but I knew it was another level too. Was it crazy for you to see like you had wanted to go to UConn, you went to the camps and all that, and now it was rumors like Coach Calhoun wants you to transfer to UConn. Like, what was that type of feeling like? So it was it was cool, man. Like to know that I was wanted. I had a ton of opportunities to leave the University of Hartford, but because of my mom and my dad, my upbringing, the loyalty that University of Hartford showed me and my family, it was like far-fetched. Right. I could have I could have left to go to the pros my junior year. Um, I could have left to transfer to other schools, but the loyalty that the University of Hartford had shown to me, man, and and also, I also was smart enough and to realize like, what if I do go and transfer there? Then I'm one of 10. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to develop if I go to UConn and you got Daniel Marshall's coming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They had uh, Ray Allen's, all these other yeah. players are coming that, you know, I, I'm doing damage here. I, I think I might wanna stay here and develop my game as opposed to going and being one of 10. Right. I'm one of one here. And you have to sit out a whole year. Practicing. Right. You have to right. sit out a whole year if you change that transfer portal. Like, they ain't, <laughs> they ain't going back there. No, when you no. first heard that, that NBA scouts or the league scouts was was looking at you or, or giving you an eye, knowing that, you know, the, the big time schools, they guys get most of the looks, you know, from the NBA mm -hmm. scouts before they'll go and get a small school guy. Back then, they really weren't looking as many small mm -hmm. school guys as they were looking at the North Carolinas, the Dukes, mm -hmm. the whoever it was. Uh, when you first heard that it was a possibility for you to go to the league, something that you've been watching your whole childhood. What was your reaction to that? Super excited, D. Like, it was, I mean, to hear your name mentioned in NBA drafts. Right. Or with NBA, in the NBA circle, like y'all know DQ, it's crazy. Like, it's a dream. Without the dream even happening, it's a dream coming true yeah. in the process of it. But the most important thing, I think, it gives you a different swag. Mm -hmm. It gives you a different <laughs> confidence. Mm -hmm. you, you know DQ, like, you walk on the court, and I'm at the University of Hartford, so I didn't come with a bunch of accolades and a yeah. bunch of that are, the McDonald's All-Americans came. So right. now, when my name is mentioned, with with going to the draft and potentially being a lottery pick, when I'm when we're underground meeting the UConn players to play at such and such gym in Connecticut, 
Yeah, like, y'all know what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't have like, I, you know, like, and there were great players at the University of Connecticut, Scott Burrell and mm, Scott Burrell, Chris Smith, and all these. Mm-hmm. So when we go to these gyms and go underground, where there's no lights and cameras and no act, you know, no media and no rankings then we going to get to it. So I was really establishing myself underground before I became, yeah. you know, you know yeah. in, 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 the, in the tabloids about being a lottery pick. That's where my street cred was better than my, my media cred. Yeah, yeah. And people knew underground, like, I was getting to it. So, yeah. but, but to have people talk about it was, was just added to what, what I was already doing. It's like, it's like having a mixtape. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> and then getting signed. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I had the buzz, but I just had to get signed. Right. How many workouts did you go on when you when you when you when you finally uh, came out and started going through the process? It's crazy because I went to like six workouts for my um for the draft because again I had to I didn't go to um Portsmouth right yeah well I didn't do any of the senior um tournaments postseason so I went worked out for the Pistons. I worked out for the Golden State Warriors. I worked out for Sacramento. I worked out for a lot of teams. Um, and interestingly enough, I went eighth, but the Pistons were nine and 10. My workout with the Pistons was so horrible. I heard them when I left the draft. They were like, we weren't gonna take. Yeah. <laughs> it was awful, like my draft workout was horrible for them. They, they ended up taking Allen Houston and Lindsey Hunter in that draft. Mm-hmm. I but, um, but I worked out for a lot of people because for me, it was like I got a, you know, I got a, that small school stigma was still there. Like we saw him do it against Vermont and Maine. Like, yeah. Can he do it right. at this level? So that's why one of the reasons I worked out for so many people. You didn't go to the, did you go to the draft? I did, I went, to, went to Detroit, the, how yeah. Was that, how was the experience? It was great. The draft and shaking the commissioner's hand. It yeah. was great. And the, I think the, the most amazing part of that draft for me was I didn't know where I was going. Yeah. I had no idea. Like Milwaukee was my worst, like Detroit and Milwaukee were my worst workouts. Mm-hmm. Milwaukee was my worst workout because he pushed me to the max. Coach Dunleavy was also the GM at, as well. And man, like three or four times in that draft workout, I was like, man, I'm I'm done. I'm not doing it I anymore. hated teams that did that shit. <laughs> like, like, well, come on, bro. You just, <laughs> you just trying to burn me out, right. run all my gas out. Just yeah, bro, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I don't want to do yeah, the workout the anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so when I got to the draft, sitting at the table, it's one thing to have all your dreams in that room. Like I knew I would possibly be lottery. I was, I was pretty much guaranteed that Denver would take me at nine. Um, but I didn't know Milwaukee was gonna take me at eight, and that's so that made the dream even that more amazing. Yeah. How was it for you, like your pops to see your growth and you falling in love with with basketball, especially coming up through a church and you done found a sport that you love, and you know sometimes we play on Sundays, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. how was that for your pops to see the growth and the levels? Of, that you're going to, and then finally get to the draft and, and see his son yeah. Marco Barron shaking the commissioner. Hand. Yeah. So when my dad, it was crazy because I watched him watch me. Like my dad's faith and his belief in God, and 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 you know him becoming a minister and a pastor. Like I watched him be like my faith in everything that I've worked for and believed in has come come to fruition through my son. So he, you know, he had it. Pastor mentality, my dad's super quiet, laid back. Mm-hmm. But I watched him not only be proud, but I watched him also believe like my faith has come to fruition. Mm-hmm. My kid has made it. Yeah. And so that was that was a joy um, to see him happy and to see my mom just as happy as well. My mom worked for two years after I went to the league. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was a bit, they still weren't, <laughs> Adapting to, Adapt it, yeah. to it or believed yeah. it yet. Yeah. Um, they both worked for like two years. So I, I was happy to um, uh, see them happy and get them in a space where they could finally, you know, retire. Your rookie year, you, you get to Milwaukee, um, Midwest, you know, your rookie year. And the first year for you, how, how, how did you feel about the first year being in the league, the, high, the highest level you can go? I'm a basketball fan, an NBA fan. So I was in all, y'all know this thing. Right. You're in all. Every game. <laughs> right? You're in all that I'm here. I mean, like, just being on my team, like, 
no disrespect to my teammates, and but my teammates were like stars to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's because of the talent level. So part of me was like, I'm, I made it, I'm here. I can't believe that's, that's Frank Bukowski, that's Ty Day, that's Lee Mayberry. But then the competitive side is like, later for that, man, it's time to get to it, right? Yeah. So I had to be a fan, and then I had to be the eighth pick in the draft. Um, expectations. The expectations had to, had, to, had to kick in, so. When you start playing against these, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's Ewan, it's, it's, it's Lonzo Morning, it's, you know, Lajuan, David Robinson. And, and like I said, your game was, was like smoother, more footwork, you can dribble, you can shoot, like the adjustment. Mm -hmm. on on defense, you know, you got to guard bigger guys, but they got to guard you. What did you start seeing that that you can get success at? Yeah, the physicality was crazy. Dude. Like I, I found myself getting pinned like almost every and night. Power forwards and them centers were strong. Both of them. <laughs> four and five. Like four, no, four and five. Four and five. <laughs> like it's story. crazy. Like big it, boy. It, that, right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like cats who didn't even get the, the superstar recognition. There was monsters in the yeah. league. Not just from scoring Oakley, and rebounding. Man. Oakley <laughs> Mason, and Mason. Them. You have to go to New York and see Oakley, Mason, and Ewing. Yeah. yeah. All on one venue. Yeah. Like the physicality was the first thing I was like, Wow, this is crazy, man. Like, but I, what I did realize, like, and we talked about this earlier, D, like my footwork was gonna be the gift. Yeah. Or or what got me through. I couldn't get pinned. I was like, I gotta use my quickness and things that I've been gifted with to survive. It wasn't even about being an all-star. It was just I need to not get pinned. You know, <laughs> right. and, and that time it was just floppies, like yeah. just pin down post. Yeah. It wasn't all this moving around. So the physicality and the speed of the game, you're gonna see right away if somebody can do it or not. Right. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, since we, we own that, one of the things I loved about centers, I felt like Carl Malone did it, man, probably the best out of anybody to seal. Like yeah. you're saying, pin, like a seal a person under the net where they ain't moving. They put that anchor down and they ain't moving back in the day. Yeah. They ain't move. It's not in the game today. No. And then was used to be some of the most easiest buckets to either get fouled on or to get you a layup on. Right. What you think about that? Like, how is that's not in the game no more where guys is really sealing guys under the goal like how they used to? It's amazing because the three point game has just changed the mentality. Um, it's changed the plays, and it's just changed the mentality of the big. Yeah, you know, you guys when that that word and and D, you might have been classified as one like when that word stretch four hit. Yeah, then yeah. they moved it to the stretch five. Yeah. I'm like they moved it to the stretch five too. When did <laughs> like when did it move to the stretch five? So when the stretch four and stretch five became like like KG Nowitzki yeah. Nowitzki and all them that became sexy, hmm. and all that physicality. Um, kind of went out the game based on the style of play. Um, so, but but being a coach, I think the, the 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 great part of being a coach right now is that I can I get an opportunity working with Bobby Brook and Giannis. Those nuances of the game, I literally can whisper in their ear, like if there's a cross screen, if Giannis is getting a cross screen, or Brook is getting, or Bobby's getting a cross screen, I'll tell him. Hey, stop in the paint. Stop in the paint. Right just in front of the goal. Mm -hmm. You know, just stop. Don't let him push you to the box. Exactly, yeah. because the advantage is we're giving you the advantage. If he sets that cross screen, if you stop, they can only push you they so can only far. Push you. Yeah. Right? So so those those type of nuances that I get to teach from the 90s, the physicality and yeah. stuff. Because as much as it doesn't feel like in the 90s it was a thinking man's game, because yeah. of the physicality and speed, it was a thinking man's game. But no, you, you had to, because there was some big, strong yeah. motherfuckers right. out there. So right. you had to know once you beat your man, it's a seven foot strong <laughs> right, <laughs> right yeah. there right. that's waiting every time. I mean, think how great Reggie Miller was in the 90s, man. And, yeah. and yeah. they got a chance to hand check and hold, and hold you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine the freedom he would have to run yeah. now, man, and right. how fast. It would be crazy. Let me ask you this. When this is my guy. He's one of my favorite, all-time favorite players, mm -hmm. big dog. Yeah. You know, when he got drafted and you heard that he, he asked for the 100 mil, <laughs> like, what was your thought process to, to that? Because guys had never, which is well-deserved because he was a dog coming out of, yeah. out, of, out of college, but 
just to see how the money went from that to where they changed it and put a cap on it. Yeah, so the crazy thing about that, D, in hindsight, like the the year prior was my draft. Yeah. Chris Webber got 72. Yeah. Right. Dog just asked for 68. So it really mm. was like in the wheel. It was in the, he was the number was one in the wheelhouse. Right? Yeah. It was a wheelhouse of, um, I think because of the market and, and where we were, it was made more of a, of a bigger thing, like the 68 million over 10 years. But let me be clear, Glenn Big Dog Robinson was worth every penny. Every penny. Boy. <laughs> every penny. Like, let me be clear, Glenn Robinson was a monster coming out of college. Yeah. He was, and, and he was on every um, TV show, every magazine, magazine. Everything. Jason Kidd and Greg Hill were in that draft. Nobody said they should that he should go, they should go before him. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know what I mean? He was just a beast, man. To, to clarify this too, cause me and QB trying to tell people this all the time, no disrespect to Grant Hill and Jay Kidd, but Big Dog posed the one rookie of the year. Absolutely. Yep. I, the only reason he didn't win it is because he held out for the money, in my humble opinion. If yeah. you, you we do say your homework thing. on him, yeah. like, we say the same thing. You do thing. your homework, he averaged 22 points a game as a rookie. <laughs> yeah. And, Fresh and, off hold out, right. And, and 22 points a game in 1995 is like 30. Yeah. yeah. Now, as yeah. a rookie, too? As a rookie. So the only reason he did not make or win co rookie or maybe split it three ways is because of the, the holdout and also a dog. Dog, y'all had Dog on the show, yeah, right? Yeah. A real one. Yeah. yeah. So Dog, in his interviews, he's not going to be politically yeah, correct and say none. what you want him to say. Um, but be clear, like, Glenn Robinson was a bucket. Like, like at his first year, he may have been one of the most prolific scorers in the league at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I've watched, I watched, like, my big bro, but I watch great defenders like Stacey Augman and mm, Pippen. Plastic man. <laughs> great defenders just struggle. That that slide back, <laughs> you, know the one, <laughs> you know the one? You know what I'm talking about, Q, with the high heart? Yeah, I used Over to get with. hit with that all the time. I used to be like, dang, he getting to it. Like, I, you know, I got a chance to, to watch it close up. Like, he getting to it, like when the wings were a thing, yeah. defensively and offensively. What year did you feel like you started to, to set your feet in and and you start to have big time success. So what you know the crazy thing, Nate? Like my rookie season 1993 was the inaugural um rookie game mm -hmm. at oh, the okay. All-Star weekend. Yeah. And I was the eighth pick, and they took the top 16 people. And I didn't make that game. Mm. My first half of my rookie season didn't really go that well. A lot of people don't don't know that because of the success that I had thereafter. Right, but my my rookie season heading into All-Star break was a dud. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back from the All-Star break, I literally watched the All-Star game. I'm like, dang, it's, I don't know if it's disrespect or I'm just not doing what I'm supposed what to do doing, as the yeah. eighth pick. So fast fact, I didn't make that game, uh, the all rookie All-Star game in February by April or June when the act the the awards came out, I was unanimous uh, all rookie. Myself, mm -hmm. Penny, and C Webb were unanimous all rookie choices. So from uh, February to the end of the season went, went crazy. crazy. <laughs> went, so that's when I really start. And then by the second year, I missed my first year. I missed the rookie game, rookie All Star game. My second year, I was in the actual All Star game. Mm -hmm. So how, that's how was that walking into that room with you know you got the you, you walking in there with MJ and them boys in there like what was what was that like to to be at the All Star game and being a, a member of the team? Man, I I, I should have taken a camera and a mic with me because I, it was surreal. I felt yeah. like you know this again like what we talked about when I was at the University of Harvard. I understood where I was yeah. on the totem pole. I made the All Star game. Yeah, but I'm not him, 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 and him. you got MJ there. You watching? You watching top fifty walk All through time. the hallway? Yeah, and so it was a ama it was amazing. Q just oh, to and be that there. was the year the top fifty. Yeah, so. So my rookie season, I mean, my first year was Phoenix. The second year I made the All-Star game was Cleveland. Was that Cleveland, was top 50. Top 50. Wow. Yeah, that was top 50 when I saw Wilt in the hallway like, and all that. was that? You crazy. Just crazy. 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 Like, yeah, all crazy. That, Seeing so. Wilt and Patrick Damn. and all these great, it really put into perspective, like 
the, the irony of it is, it's like I made the All Star team, but I ain't really made nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was, it was like that's it was, the pinnacle yeah, over that's there. That's the like. pinnacle right there to see <laughs> Will Chamberlain, man. And again, I'm a basketball historian, man. So it was a blessing to be at the All Star game, but even cooler to, to be in that in the presence of those greats. When you first heard, because you know we all love Mike. When mm -hmm. you first heard that Mike wants you to be a part of Team Jordan, what was your reaction to it? It, it, to be honest with you, it was bigger than being drafted. Yeah. I mean, and in some ways, like, bigger than being an all-star. Like, at that point, it you know, there's, like, all-star, all-NBA. You know, there's levels yeah. to the yeah. eliteness. Um, so to, to get the opportunity to, to have Michael stamp you is different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like day one, because I was on the first batch. The first yeah. ever. Like, yeah. that's right? Right. Yeah. He, he yeah. fought the yeah. inaugural. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He yeah. fought the inaugural. Remember the jump? Yeah. Right? yeah. Jump yeah. 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 So the first batch was like myself, Ray, Eddie Derek, Jones. Eddie Jones, Derek Anderson, Anderson. Eddie, Finley. Mike Finn. And so me, me, and, me and Eddie got an opportunity to have our own shoes. Like mm. we had the power forward and we had like the, the, the two guard. Yeah. Uh, the, I had the pro strong. So to have Michael stamp you was different. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to be an all-star and walk through the arenas, and but now people are like, yo, I need to get some of those. Yeah. Yeah. So it was cool, man. Like, like I, I mean, like anybody else growing up, everybody's my, a Michael Jordan fan. Yeah. And, and to have, it was surreal for me to have Michael stamp me, man. Like, I, I remember being in Seattle. The cool part about it is I got, a, got to get a relationship with him and a friendship with him. And I remember when I got traded to Seattle, we played the Bulls. And um, well, I wanted to be in this commercial. So the Sonics were really good, man. Like we were number one in the West at the time. Yeah. And I begged my organization to fly to Chicago, which is like a four hour trip from Seattle. And um, I, I um, they said yes. And I got to the photo shoot and I have Falk as an agent as well. Yeah, Dave Falk. So I got to the, Photo shoot, all giddy that I'ma be make this little slight cameo in the in the brand Jordan commercial. First thing MJ says to me when he's because we were playing the Utah Jazz the following night, mm -hmm. and he knew that, and he said to me, "What the hell are you doing here?" I was like, <laughs> True story. <laughs> and um, I was like, "I'm coming for the commercial." He that was like one of my first lessons. Like, nah, bro. Right. That you wanna you in a place now where you winning. This is secondary. So. You know, I learned so many lessons from him being in that brand, man. Not just being stamped for the brand, but just learning about him and his competitive nature. Seeing you being there from the, the, the get-go and the start to see where Jordan Brand is now with Jason Tatum, Zion, and Chris Paul, and Russell Westbrook, how it grown. We came in in 2000, it took another step up. Mm -hmm. To see the brand going that far and still it's like the number one brand in the world, like how is that to see, like you kind of started and, and was a part yeah, of that? Man. The first part. Yeah, it, it's great. I saw a magazine and like a, a something that I Googled search and I saw myself, Zion, Luca, and someone else. This is like two years ago where, where they were talking about, about the brand and it was just amazing to see myself on a picture with Zion, Luca, yeah. right? and then yeah. the current guys, and then of course Jason and Russell, man, and, yeah. and, and Blake. I mean, it, it's just awesome that that I was a part of the beginning of it. Yeah, um, and I feel like it's it's family. I I even you know I text with with, with Paulo now. Yeah, because he's family, Jordan yeah, family. He's Jordan family. Now we have to play Orlando, <laughs> but he's still my Jordan family. Yeah. So it, it's just it's a blessing, man. Like. I, and I'm I'm trying to. It's funny because I, I have to mentor those guys too, but I have yeah. to play against them too. Mm -hmm. So my mentoring can only go so far uh, <laughs> when when we play against Orlando. But it's it's a blessing, man. I think that's how I feel with me and Q. As soon as we hear a guy is signed to Jordan, it's like you instantly part oh, of our man. family. Yes, because we we have been part of the Jordan family for so long. It's like you instantly part of the family exactly. once once we hear you sign with Jordan. And to me, yeah, it's just like you know, you you was there this summer when we you know mm -hmm. go to the to the brand. Uh, I call it the family reunion. Mm -hmm. You know, they call yeah. it the board of governors. Yeah. I just call it the Jordan <laughs> Brand family reunion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. show up, and it's like I I I I think it's it's super dope. You know what I'm saying to have. 
the the OGs like y'all, you know, Ray always on deck. Mm-hmm. How you build and, and and some of the dudes that really was like you say, y'all y'all kicked it off. Y'all put the foundation down for this to be doing what it's doing now. So it's it's dope to see the brand really honor everybody and still hold everybody down because they don't have to. You know right. what I'm saying? They they definitely don't have to do Absolutely. what they do and extend themselves the way they do for for the OGs and the guys that were, you know, the, the past guys that came. Because, like, it's crazy, bro, to still be able to, you know, receive the things we receive the way we do and from from the brand and and it ain't cheap. You nah. see them, you see them, <laughs> them price tag. Well, I'll be like, Lord, have mercy, thank you, God. Like, you know what I'm saying? For like, sure. <laughs> real appreciative, but yeah. like, you know, so I think it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like you say with MJ, it's just top, top, you know what I'm saying, top shelf with everything, the way, you know what I'm saying, they take care of us and look out for us because we know that they don't have to. So right. I, I just love to, to see all of the OGs, Slow. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. when I saw you, I was like, OG, oh, what's good? Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it, I, yeah. I was loving that. That's yeah. the way it should be. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Everybody don't do that, but you know what I'm saying? The brand do it the right way. And I, yeah. I, I love that. And M hit me um, when we won it two years ago. I was in uh, Greece with Giannis. I had just got into Greece with Giannis and, and I got an email. And um, I was reading the email and it could have only been from one person. Right. And I, but I was like, he was like, congratulations. So part, so happy you're part of the brand. I mean, that was super dope, man, for yeah. him to email me about the success that we had just had yeah, with the up. team. So to your point, Q, it just feels like family all the time. All it's the not time. just, you know, on the surface with commercials. Exactly. It's behind the scenes. Yeah. It's love. Yeah. And all the people that that work with Jordan Brand, if they work with Jordan Brand for five years and went somewhere else, yeah, they feel like family coming up, 100%. coming up to you, yeah. and looking out for yeah. it. When you got traded, did you know you was gonna get traded? Or nah. did you, did it blindside you? It, it did, D, because I was, I had flown back, I flew back to Milwaukee. Um, we were getting ready for the season. So this is in September. So, oh, you know, yeah. like September, you you ramping up. Yeah. And, go. and again, this is 1997. There's no social media. <laughs> yeah. There's no nothing. There's no, no talk Woj about bombs it. No Woj. Like, <laughs> Woj was around it, it, during that time. I probably would have had the heads up. Right. Man. But I didn't know, D. I was actually in the gym working out. And, um, one of my coaches, his name was Jim Todd. He came down to the court. I'm, I literally was shooting in the gym, just kind of rent, trying to get ready for the season. And so I was watching people move up top. And I'm like, you know, I'm at the time I'm me, like what, what, ain't, not one coach had come down and like helped me rebound or anything. So finally Jim Todd came <laughs> down and I said, um, I jokingly, I said, just tell me what it's going to be. You know, I was in that space. Like, tell me what it's going to be. Y'all, y'all trying to move me? Like, he's like, he dropped his head. I was like, huh? <laughs> like y'all really. The true story, there, like y'all really trade me. He's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's Seattle. So it was, it was a, a, Damn. a shock. Dude. That's just how it happened. So it was a surprise. I was a little bit like, it hit, it hurt me yeah. initially. You know how like you know, it hurts you this, when you leave your first time. Right. <laughs> it's like you, you're the failure. You're the reason. Yeah. Um, that the team isn't succeeding. So, but obviously, I, you know, my first year in Seattle, I had great success there. Tell us about just Seattle is one of the teams that they're trying to bring back to life and give them a, I mean, Seattle is one of the cities that mm-hmm. they're trying to bring back to life and give them a team again, them in Vegas. Just tell us about the, the culture of Seattle and the basketball culture down there, how rich it is, how the fans always come out and support. What was it, Key Arena? Key Arena. Key yeah. Arena yeah. used to be hype and yeah. loud. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We, we got that. But, you know, you go in there and, and get an opportunity to, to play on a, a team that can be at the top of the standings mm-hmm. and, and compete for a championship. Yeah, well, I, I hope and I, I I feel and I've heard that they're going to bring a, a, a team back to Seattle in the next few years. It's a It's an amazing sports city um i enjoy my time the fans are great there blue collar and i was traded i was put into a situation where they were two years removed from going to the finals Mm -hmm. so the you know i was traded for sean and so to get to the city in that space man where they they had pretty much exactly had established themselves as a perennial uh title contender and two years removed from the finals it was crazy man like I had a lot to prove, obviously, but the buzz was was there. So, you know, my first year in Seattle was crazy. I think we won like 61 games, got to play with my big bro, GP, um, which was amazing. Um, 
the best, you know, basketball player I ever played with, you know, as far as the team is concerned on, on being on a roster. Um, but it was, it's a great city, man. Like, like I'm, I'm hoping that they get a, a team back there very soon. Uh, they're yearning for it, man, and they deserve it. I love, I love playing in Seattle, man. Like Trek going there, like, I, like you saying, it was a dope city. Like when you go into the road cities that you like, like I like, I always had a good time in Seattle. You yeah, know what I'm saying? it's great, 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 great city, man, and great fans. And like, like I said, my first year there, man, I was getting the mist of the sneeze. Mm -hmm. So the fan support was bananas, and all eyes were on us. And we, we, my first year there, we delivered. Did you go to the market and throw the fish? I did. Everybody. Like catch the fish? I, I saw did. that on, I was I about to say, yeah. I saw him do that. I, did you do that on- uh, Amara uh, Rashad. Yeah, my, yeah, 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 my, my first, first time, time there, yeah, I ain't gonna hold you. Like, I ain't do it on my own. It was like something <laughs> right. like that. They set it I, up. Yeah, they set it up. So the, the, the catch and the throw wasn't natural, so. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big fish. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Talking about GP, man, um, you know, uh, back then GP was was loud as ever. When we got to the league, we, we heard <laughs> him. No matter how packed it was, <laughs> no matter, we heard him. And you would take his trash, some people took his trash talking a, a certain way, but just, just speak on just how good of a person, how good of a leader GP was. Well, I know we weren't on GP team, but we used to go to Seattle every summer and playing his game. And it's, it, we always had that bond with him and he always been a solid, thorough one. Yeah. But tell yeah, us shout, about shout out to my big brother who's coaching now in college and, yeah. and helping young men. I was just with him at his golf tournament about uh, two and a half months ago. But man, he, for his, all the, tr the greatest trash talk in the history of basketball, Straight I've up. heard about Bird, and I, 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 but I played with him. So yeah. uh, there was no level of person or competitor or talent that you were that he wasn't gonna get at you. you yeah. know, I know y'all saw the, the <laughs> Chicago finals when he was getting an M. And, yeah. and um, so listening to him every night, cause we talked about my background, um, hearing some of the stuff he was saying. Like, I'm from Old Saybrook, G from Oakland. Yeah. Now, we both competitors, so, but he brought me into some 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 conversations sometimes <laughs> that I, I had to pray my way out of. <laughs> I need to pray my way out of this because I just heard something that I know it, ain't right. that's going to that's gonna have to be dealt with with violence. <laughs> Throw it up. Because cause, cause cause, cause the thing about my big bro, man, is like, it fueled him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't fake at all, man. Like nah. it fueled him. Like very rarely could he play a basketball game and not be in that space. Mm -hmm. Right. He had, matter of fact, people talk about him not practicing, right? Like, and and the Iverson thing about he was, the, I think he might have said on that he was the one that talked about to Allen about not practicing. But the one thing about G not practicing, he couldn't. A because of the, the amount of games. But he don't have a chill gear. He don't. Yeah. If he out there, he getting to he it. Pedal, he in, right, y'all he get heard into of the Vernon Maxwell <laughs> practice, practice, right? Yeah. Nah. The, the the fight between Vernon and G, like uh -huh. that 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 was in practice. Like Vernon Maxwell, Mad Max and GP in a practice. It didn't. Uh, that don't, that sound it didn't like last. That. <laughs> it, it, it didn't <laughs> last because they all escal it escalated quickly because they're both tremendous competitors, and that's how G is, man. He doesn't have a a gear where he can go out and walk through or, or, or practice. He he's he's the most competitive, probably with the exception exception of M, the most competitive person I've been around, man. Like he just brought it every night. But you could appreciate it if you with and to your point, D like he's a good dude. Yeah. Like he just that right, gear, dude. that competitive gear, once that's turned on, all bets are off. He yeah, gonna talk. He got the right. If you brought family, friends, Girlfriend, wife, you you don't want to get started with him because yeah. he, he gonna disregard the fact that they did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you played for the Knicks. How was it? How was it playing at, at MSG? Like, how did you? What was your experience like playing and playing for the Knicks? The Mecca man is yeah. amazing. Like, I had I'll say this Q and D. Like, I had just when I played for New York, I had just went through my struggles my with addiction in in Boston mm -hmm. and. I was sitting home and I got the opportunity to go back to Boston, I mean, to New York that same season where I had my my struggles. And, um, you know, Isaiah was there, Steph was there, Marbury was there, Allen Houston was there. But the story about the Mecca and playing in the Garden, like I had a ton of good nights there playing with Seattle and Milwaukee, but I'll tell you a Garden story that was super dope, man. Like, 
I had struggled all year and it was well documented that I was struggling with with alcoholism. And then I got the opportunity to come and play back, play with the Knicks at the end of the season. We're playing against the New Jersey Nets in the in the playoffs, and I hadn't I hadn't played like the whole series. And it was game four, and, and Coach Wilkins put me in. Like, mm. you know, we and it was a game we had to have. He finally put me in the game. And um <clears throat> scored like maybe 10 points, it was a good game, scored like maybe 10 points, five rebounds, but on my way off the court, I fouled out. On my way off the court, the entire um, garden stood up and applauded me, man. Mm. Like it was crazy, cause I was still in a, in a fog with yeah. what I was going through, man. It was like the most surreal, one of the most surreal moments that I ever had as a basketball player, cause it was like they they knew what I was yeah, going through. They, yeah. Like talking about knowledgeable. Not, that's one thing knew. about the Knicks yeah, fans. Like you yeah, can say man. what you want about them, but yeah. they know what is going yeah, on, and they yeah. they real fans. They yeah, they man. like that's what you gotta rock. Like because they'll they could say whatever about they Knicks, but let somebody else say it. Right, it's about to go <laughs> down. Like no, I could say anything, right. but you better right. not say a right. damn word. Right, right. Like, exactly. This is Ex my anger, Ex not yours. Ex exactly, <laughs> like, and you get the love for them. Walking down the street, you Straight know, you up. get the love from them. And I'm, I'm talking about to this day, man, you yeah. can go to New York and still get love as if you on the roster now. That's how New York Nick fans that, are. That, bro, I say it all the time. I, my four years in New York, it was struggles. And I didn't feel like, you know, I did shit there really. But like to get the love and respect you get when, like you say, we go there for, to work or do anything. And then just... New Yorkers are every fucking way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Like, yeah. live here in Orlando, right. like, everywhere. Everywhere. You, I've bumped in people from New York, just in random places, yeah. in the airport, someone was like, yeah, man, loved you when you, we were, when you were at the Knicks, man, yeah. I'm from New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. I'm talking about, that's yeah, New yeah. York be, you might be, you could be in Brazil, <laughs> someone like, yo, from New for York, sure. yo, like, you'd be yep. like, and they gonna shout you out, I don't care who you are. If yep. you play for the Knicks, I don't care if you even got in the game, they gonna know you play for the <laughs> exactly. team, and they gonna run up on you exactly. like, yo, you get a picture, yo, you probably I loved you with the Knicks, so yep. like they gonna then they gonna say something to let you know they remembered you. They gonna give you a little memory too. Yep. Like that's what the, yep. like out of everything, like yeah. the Knicks fans are bar none with that, bro. Like yeah. like they flawless. Great with fans, that. great fans, man. We're in a new era, and um, back in our day, we we couldn't say anything about our problems, or we mm -hmm. couldn't speak about mental health. Mm -hmm. Seeing how the league has evolved, where you know. It's a lot of pressure on us because mm -hmm. when we put that jersey on, we are looked at like superheroes. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we still human. We eat, sleep, and shit the same way That's right. as everybody else. To see how the NBA and its players then stepped up to another level of the mental side of it or mm -hmm. what somebody's going through or it could be somebody in their family. You know, sometimes they don't always have to be that specific person. How proud did you see the, the guys expressing themselves in that way and, and showing the growth, teams making sure they have a mental health doctor or, or, or somebody for access for them to talk to, not only for them to talk to, mm -hmm. but they're not relaying a message to a team so it'll right. be penalized for them. Just somebody to just release what they need to release mentally of. How, how proud are you of the league and the teams to, of stepping up to a level of that? Yeah, I'm I'm super proud, D, like that that the league has, and and really our country and our society has acknowledged yeah. that mental health is a real issue. Yeah. Um, in particular for professional athletes, and I'm proud of Giannis. Giannis's um, foundation deals with mental health, and they're doing him and Thanasis are doing wonderful work with their foundation dealing with mental health, but. It, it's it's mandatory and necessary, man. Like, and I'm happy that the league has taken on this responsibility and taken on act, taken action uh, to see those players through. Not just players who have the issues, but players who just are going through their day to day lives. Man, yeah. you give an 18, 19 year old, 20 year old, 40 million dollars, and just assume that he's going to know how to deal right. with it yeah. is is in some ways absurd. Mm -hmm. And so it. it you know, if the, you didn't have the issues before, there's a good chance that you could get issues. Yeah. And so um, to see that the NBA and see that people uh, like Jan and myself who are dealing with those issues, because we face, like you alluded to, D, we, have, we face these issues just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. On top of the fact 
and add to the fact that we got to perform at the highest level. You could be going through something and nobody cares. They just want the numbers. Yeah. You dig like when, when, I, when I was going through my situation in Seattle, I had just signed a max deal at the time, mm -hmm. right? Like I signed for 80 million bucks and nobody, I can't tell anybody I just, I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Right. They want, they want the numbers. Mm -hmm. They want the performance. I, I won't say the team or, or the situation, but I remember talking to a doctor one time and I was going through my situation, true story. And, um, he was like, you know, we, we, we've taken a look at your body and your, your body is telling us different than what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like you, you have an issue according to your body. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, cause you know, I'm, I'm living, I'm stinking, thinking I'm living the lie trying to, yeah. at the time. And I'm like, really? He was like, yeah, I'm, we're looking at your, your liver function and all that yeah. stuff. I was like, nah, doc, true story. He says to me, he's like, look, you start playing better all this is not a thing. Yeah. What? I, I kid you not, Q. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm like, huh? <laughs> like real, that's a real story. And so um, back to the original point, like to have people, the NBA and, and athletes come out and say, I'm dealing, I'm struggling with this or I'm struggling with this and have not only the, the, the help there, but the hope that you can overcome it is mandatory. Yeah. yeah. And, and it gives it gives athletes the opportunity because I was afraid to come out and say, like, I got a problem. Something's going on with me. Yeah. Like, it just wasn't a thing to do. Yeah. But now it's it's a thing to say I'm struggling. Yeah. You know, so you, yeah. that you can get the appropriate yeah. and necessary help. Yeah. yeah. One thing uh, I just remember as a league and whole, once Jose Canseco came out with the steroid thing for baseball, they checked all the leagues. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. a lot of guys was really tree. They really wasn't drinking as mm -hmm. much as they was mm -hmm. because you took the one test at the beginning of the year and then you was kind of free to do whatever they you want. Right. They did that. But then when they started making guys, no matter if you a veteran or not, take them four tests, a lot of guys was really abusing that alcohol that was, like yeah. a whole lot. Myself is in, mm -hmm. included because I was on a, a horrible team, so it was like, shit, I might as well go <laughs> and get me a drink. We, didn't get, we got our ass kicked right. anyway. Mm -hmm. But just like, I, I'm just so proud of the league. I'm so proud of the players because that's a lot because you always want to look like the most powerful and the most sane person in the room every time, especially when you got all these fans looking up to you, you sign the autographs and all that. But to come out and be vulnerable, absolutely, you know, not and not yep. scared to be yep. vulnerable, yep, or not scared to be vulnerable in front of my man because oh, he might think I'm weak, right? Because right. I, I'm I'm doing this while I'm being vulnerable with him. Uh, it's a blessing. It is, man. You know, it is in, like in the show sky. strength and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Like there's strength in it because we all like. Matter of fact, I think like in some in some ways when you show the vulnerability or that you can be vulnerable because of what you mentioned, d that like this super strength and these superpowers and this super money that we have, people think we can't go through certain Anything. things. Yeah, it, it, it To me, it's yeah. exacerbated when you get all those things that come along with your super talent. So it, to your point, D, like the vulnerability to me, man, like when I was able to, to say that I, when I finally got to a point was where I was like, man, I'm an alcoholic. Mm -hmm that's when the strength and the power happened. Like I was able to like not have somebody else tell it, right? media tell it, cause that, that make you like, it makes you it worse. Yeah. But when you can say it yourself, that I'm vulnerable, I got an issue, then you can start dealing with it and then you can start helping other people. Yeah, most definitely. How did you uh, come up with the Stand Tall uh, Foundation? And, <clears throat> and then you got the Van Bakery uh, Recovery Center in Milwaukee. So yeah, man, the, so I moved the Stand Tall to the Bouncing Back Foundation. It was Stand Tall when I was in the league. Okay. And then um, I went through what I went through, so it turned to Bouncing Back. Okay. I had to no, bounce I like back. That. Yeah, 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 so, I like so that. it's the Bouncing Back Foundation. And and then I got this great opportunity, man. I met some wonderful folks, um, Charles Rogers, Charles Ray, and Michael Errico, and uh, they, they have a company called Addiction Medical Solutions. So next uh, April, 17th, I'll celebrate 14 years of sobriety. Mm, and so congrats. when I got back to Milwaukee, thanks to you, when I got back to Milwaukee 
And I had this, you know, this great pl platform, man. Like I'm, I'm with the Bucks, number one team in basketball, won a championship. Now I could have taken this coaching gig and this opportunity with the Bucks and just rode off into the sunset. But I knew that, that I had been given this platform and this opportunity to go back and help people who have gone through what I've gone through. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, by the grace of God, I met people who not only, cause I had told the story a ton, my book, God and Starbucks, a lot of articles written, but I wanted to not only take over the narrative of my story to help people um, with the testimony, but then I wanted to have the opportunity to provide the hope and help. So next month, um, we're, we're gonna open up the first Vin Baker Recovery Center in Milwaukee, mm. and we're gonna be able to serve a thousand, help a thousand people a month in this in, intense outpatient um, center. And man, like out of all the stuff we talked about Q, D, like this is the most epic thing I've ever been a part of because it's, it's when you talk about legacy and leaving a legacy, the sport thing is cool, yeah. but when you can, Change lives, change lives yeah. and families, man. That's mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. So I, I'm blessed, and I appreciate you talking about that, Q. So I'm blessed to not only turn my trial and tribulation into an opportunity to be back in the league and mentor basketball players, but I'm blessed now with an opportunity to get into our society, our community, yeah, and get people sober and living life on life terms, which is it changes families, it changes generations. Yeah. So that's what I'm excited about, man. Yeah, it's always a blessing, you know, when you can, you, I feel like when you get at a certain age, it's your responsibility to give back, especially if you experience so much stuff. 100%. When you was going through what you was going through and you, you got the call to to be with the Bucks and they want to bring you back and bring around. Cause yeah. you know, sometimes when a guy go through something, he's looked at like, yeah, I'm not finna bring him around all, all these good people because of the influence and so forth on. Yeah. But to have an organization be like, nah, he, he want our own and we want to bring him in the fold and we want to bring him to these guys. We want the guys to see him, him give the knowledge. Yeah. How was that and what you felt about the Bucks organization since then? Man, I'm so blessed from ownership and, and, and Peter Fagan and John Horseman and, and the players. Giannis, Chris, Brooke, Bobby, on down the line, man. Like, to your point, Q, it was hard, man. Like, once you go through that that stigma, once yeah. you're labeled as yeah. the guy who was an alcoholic, who lost his career, who lost everything, it's hard as hell to build trust again. Mm -hmm. Cause you get, I was sober, right. but it's like, who wants that story around? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what can he, outside of the story, what can he do for Giannis? and Brooke and Bobby outside yeah. of that. You don't really see that from the dollars and cents yeah. in, the, in, in the platform that the NBA is. So it, it wasn't it wasn't overnight. You know, I had to come in and, and build trust again and they gave me an opportunity. Like my first job was uh, pre and post game mm -hmm. um, with the Bucks, but but Jay Kidd was the, the head coach at the time when I came back to the Bucks. So I was doing pre and post game, but Jay had me around the gym all the time. Right. You know, Jay, Jay saw the value and having me in the gym. And then um, I got to like any basketball, like y'all have advanced, we, I learned the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so my first couple years, true story, man, I, I rarely spoke to Giannis like my first year. Right. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to establish trust and I, went, I just, I didn't, yeah, I didn't just want to dive in and plus his game wasn't back to the basket at the time right. anyway. I couldn't say nothing to his game at yeah. the time. Yeah. He was doing stuff cute that I'd never seen before. <laughs> so, up. so me teaching the fadeaway wasn't even an option right. when I first got there. Yeah. But um, getting the opportunity to build trust with these dudes, man. And believe it or not, when you go through something, man, and you, and you overcome it, you have more strength and power. Mm -hmm. That saying, what doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. Yeah. Yeah. When I came back to the Bucks, man, they gave me the opportunity, I felt, empowered mm -hmm. that I had overcome this obstacle, man. And so, you know, it gave me a chance to, to start mentoring. Before I became a coach, I was I was mentoring uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, they knew the story. Talk about the relationship with Giannis, like just the type of person he is. You know, we all seen this story and heard how he's come up and just to be able to see him and all that he does. And my thing that I like about him is that he got one gear, he go hard. He don't, like, that's what, out of everything, you know, he's got all of those different talents, but the thing that I appreciate the most is that 
he he's a dude that's gonna bring it every single night. He's gonna be playing every game and he's gonna go hard. Like how refreshing is it for you to see that type of mentality in the superstar? You know what I'm saying? That you get to see close up personal like that. It's it's amazing, Q, because he's a great person. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a better person than he is a basketball player, and that's almost impossible to say given the talent and the accolades that he's accumulated over his his short career. He's only 28 years old. Right. But he's a great person, man. Like, so to be around him and to be with him, I shouldn't say be around him, but to be with him on a day-to-day -day basis, we have a lot of similarities, man. We care about people. Um, he's a whole culture, man. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's a culture. Like, you know, I don't know. I haven't been around superstars in the league as a coach, I've just been around him, but he's a culture, man. Like he works, he's the hardest, he's the first in the gym and the last out of the gym. Um, he's focused, uh, he takes, he's a family man. So um, just to be uh, with him and be around him and um, talk basketball, talk life with him, uh, it, it's, it's crazy because I think my career was probably over like because of the addiction and like five, sixth year in the league, although I got 13 out of it. Mm -hmm. So to get this opportunity to come back and coach him in a weird kind of way, I'm living vicariously through him. Through him. Mm -hmm. And he he allows me to live vicariously mm -hmm. through him. So a lot of people think because I'm I'm there and been a part of the organization for the last seven years, I'm I'm I, yeah, I'm biased. Bias. <laughs> <laughs> of course. He's like my 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 kid, man. Like um but he's one of one, man. Like, like I was saying, he's a culture. Just one story, like we were in Indiana a couple of years ago and I asked him prior to, to the game if I could get these sneakers for a kid that was um, uh, terminally ill with cancer. And I hate to ask him, mm -hmm. but this kid, it was a request that came in that this kid was, was, was not in a good space with, with his cancer. And so we were playing Indiana, man. He was going crazy and the game got close. And um, I was like, man, I'm not gonna ask him after the game. We lose this, it's a wrap, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So he goes crazy. We end up winning the game by like two or three. And um, like immediately, immediately he leaned, like this is like eight hours later. I'm thinking he's gonna go to the locker room. Immediately he looks at me and was like pointing, like where's the kid at? Takes us, that, that's just the type of dude yeah. he is, Take man. Season, like. Yeah cares about his family, cares about his organization. As y'all can see with him re-signing with Milwaukee in the, in the last yeah. month or so, he cares about the city of Milwaukee, um, cares about his teammates. And, and his legacy at this point, man, he wants to win championships, man. He wants to, he wants to be up there with, he doesn't have a, a place where he wants to be, but he wants to throw two or three championships out there and, and let everybody debate it after yeah. that. So the dude is, the dude is locked in, man. We're, the city is fortunate. I'm fortunate to be a part of something and, and that, that somebody's actually locked into their legacy. Yeah. And we're, we're all fortunate to be a part of it. I know he's one of one. You've seen a lot of basketball. Who who would you compare Giannis to? So I would have to I would have to combine players. Okay. Yeah. So he's got Pippins like when Pippin, you know, when Pippin get it off the rim. Mm -hmm. And Pip is into that, yeah. just getting going coast to coast. Mm -hmm. There was really nobody who could really stop him. But then he has the athleticism and force of Sean. Sean Kemp. Yeah. So if you add, you do Sean and Pip with length and athleticism, that's in and, and force with Sean. That's who you got, man. Yeah. Like, and he's relentless. Like he's a type. He's his mindset is '90s. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> if you're there and then I'm, I'm gonna run over you <laughs> or I'm a Euro you. Yeah. I, it's funny because sometimes I watch in practice, you know, I, I watch in practice. I used, when I first got there, I used to be like, how would I deal with this? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we, I, we competitors, like yeah. how would I deal with it? And I'm yeah. in the back of my mind, like, yeah, I'm gonna need the wall. That, that wall that they talk about. Yeah. Like, yeah we gonna need the wall. So, yeah. yeah. But he's, he's, he's a phenomenal Especially talent. when he gained that momentum. He, he gets oh, it's, dribbling it's, and he coming. It's, it's, like, yeah. yeah. it's, it's lights out. Yeah, it's lights <laughs> out. How was it for you, you know, being the, being a part of the organization, you a coach and I know you don't really, you know, we, People may think we know, but like, when did you find out like that the that, that y'all was about to make the deal and the deal was done for Dame to come to the team? And, how, and like, what was your what was like what was your thinking when it when it happened? 
it, it was crazy because Aaron and Eric Goodwin, my, my agents, I was in uh, Oakland with GP at his golf event. I mm -hmm. saw Aaron Goodwin mm -hmm. and me and AG talked, never mentioned it. Right. <laughs> Literally a week later, Dame was a buck. Um, it, it hurt me from the standpoint that Drew. I loved Drew Holiday. Yeah, I, love Drew. I yeah, spent Drew. the whole you know week in in California with him this summer, salt of the earth. Um, but interestingly enough, Dame Lillard, salt of the earth, right. great dude, yeah. man, like an awesome, awesome person. I've been around him now for a few months, and I've, I've known Dame through Eric and Aaron. But I mean, like. Anybody else, we just added a 32 ball. Yeah. <laughs> straight like, up, straight like, like we that. we just added added a 32 and ball. Logo and, shooting. It, right. And the, and, the and then he comes in. Close. Man, he really yeah, he Should we play we played Philadelphia in, in, in our first game? Yeah. Went for 40. Yeah. yeah. So it's different like from the from the coaching side of it, man, to see this dude like at some points of the game, he's just un unguardable. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and um He's just a special spec. He's one of those ones, man. And Straight up. Cool, cool. I, I I joked with some people the other day. I said, I've been around a lot of cool brothers, man, like in my lifetime. Cool, I've been so. around Dame for four months. Dame I said, Dollar, I think man. I want to be Dame Dollar. <laughs> Dollar. I think it's I want to so be cool. Dame Dollar. I think Super I want to rap cool. like him. I think I want to <laughs> He walked through, he boxed everything. I said, I think I want to be Dame Lillard. <laughs> I don't know what's going <laughs> on. I'm coaching him, but I, wanna, right. I think I want to be him for a day. Right. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, in Milwaukee, uh, we used to play at the, the center. They used to have that. But now they didn't build like restaurants, they done built this whole new arena. It's, it kind of gives downtown Milwaukee this whole different vibe than what it used to be before. Tell us of, of how it was when you, when you was playing and you playing in the center. Remember we had to take that long walk? Yeah. <laughs> well, take out, yeah. got like the Deer District or whatever out there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. like, yeah. You, they can be outside, they got the big screen, they got the restaurants, they didn't, revamp the whole downtown for real. And it's, it's it's beautiful and it's amazing to see. Like, how is that to just see how the city then flipped and changed and they just put into the city? Yeah, it, it's crazy, D. Like, shout out to Peter Fagan and the ownership and, yeah. and of course, Giannis for, yeah. for pulling this. But Milwaukee's a vibe, man. Yeah. Like, to your point, D, like the Deer District is a real thing. Like yeah. it's, it's like you, I go around cities and I'm like, if you if you just come to the Deer District, like most, which most teams do, they yeah. just come to the hotel, the new trade hotel, and, and they're there. Like Milwaukee hits like any other city. Like yeah. it's got a beautiful new arena, um, beautiful places to eat down yeah. downtown. But the cool, I think the cool part about it's very rare for me because I played there and now I coached there. Nobody knows me as Vin Baker around the city. They know me as Coach Baker. Right. Mm -hmm. Like coach. It'd be coach. I think, I don't think, I think like 90% of the people don't even know I played there. <laughs> right. Because right? yeah. it's it's like a, it's like a, you know, obviously the success of the team and and, and Giannis and Chris and Brooke and Bobby and Pat. It's it's a vibe down there now, man. So it's yeah. it's much different. I could walk the streets of Milwaukee in, in ninety three to ninety seven, and nobody bothered me and, yeah. and, and and say anything to me about anything because right. we weren't very good. But now it's a vibe there, man. Milwaukee's yeah, I, a vibe. I feel like you know back in the day when we used to play, it was Milwaukee just seemed so old school. <laughs> yeah, and you know what I'm saying with it, but. Me previous just doing a charity event down there, uh, and I went down there and I actually seen it personally, seen the whole dish. Yeah. I was like, crazy. This is so nice. Yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah. food, all the restaurants, yeah. the people. It's a vibe. It's, a, it's an everyday thing down yeah. there from it. Yeah, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. And now we're not like second to the Packers. Yeah. You know, it, Milwaukee, the Bucks are a vibe and not second to Chicago. Yeah. How, how was that for you to be able to experience that championship though? Like, like, <laughs> Like that had to be out of this world. Surreal, man. Like to win a champ, like I, I, every box basketball wise, I had checked as a player, like um, Olympian, um, made it to all-star games, made it to the playoffs, never did anything. But to win a championship um, was the pinnacle of my career. Now I didn't do it with my sneakers squeaking, right? but I was there like yeah. on the sideline. And it, it's, it's the top of, the food chain when it comes to winning, yeah. um, the city, the journey, like winning, winning a world championship, getting to the finals. Yeah, it's hard. Kudos to, to MJ and LeBron. These dudes have do, done it multiple times, yeah. man. It is a 
it is a journey, man. Mm-hmm. And so being able to enjoy it in the city that drafted me with with with, with fans and friends and the organization, man, was surreal, man. Like got a you, Milwaukee you, Bucks ring. Got a Milwaukee. My mom has my ring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah but you, you mom, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, for you to have one, it was it's just amazing. Crazy. Yeah, it's amazing, man. Start bench cut. You got to start one. Well, start bench trade. You got to start one bench one trade one. Start one. Uh, okay. Kemp. Malone and Barkley. Who who do you start? Who do you bench? Who do you trade? Love, 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 love that question. So my favorite power forward of all time, the one I feared the most, Sean Kemp. Start one. Bench Carl and trade Charles. Trade Charles. Yeah. <laughs> nah, that, okay. <laughs> all Hall of Famers. Uh, yeah, all, all, Hall all of due Famers. respect to what, just oh, yeah, answering yeah, the question. That's yeah, why yeah. we say trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Too good to cut. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the teams that you done played for, all the teammates you had in the NBA, if you had to pick four other players to make you a five, you at the center and you had to pick you four other players, what would be your, your, your five? Man. I'm going GP at the one. Mm-hmm. Um, Ray Allen at the two. Mm-hmm. Forgot about Ray. Uh, Paul Pierce at the three. Damn. Myself at the four. And and I, I got to go with you. I'm trying to think who I play, make sure. <laughs> I played with Beast. I played with Patrick, but I played with Patrick in Seattle. Uh-huh. No matter. You can stay matter. prime it's Pat these still. I'll take prime Pat. So Pat, That's you. a five. That's a five. Yeah. That's a fucking five. Ooh, yeah. Paul. GP, Paul, and Ray Allen. That's, That's a nice two. five. That's a nice five. That's a nice five. All right, so you know, we know you from 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 small town in Connecticut and all that, and we don't, we don't want to hear what you did for pops and mom. I'm talking about when you got because you didn't got an eighty piece, big big <laughs> big bag. I want to know. I want to hear something that you did that you look back like, what the hell was I doing? Like well, when you got that bag of money, because we all did something wild. Like I don't know whether it was a crazy yeah, chain, yeah, 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 a yeah. car, but like what what did Vin do when you got the bag? Yeah. You know what's crazy, Q? The one thing I would say, the, the one crazy thing I got was before Hummers became Hummers. Oh, you got the real one. I got the real one. The Tupac Hummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and tri- did you get tricked out the real one? With the, with, the, with, the, with the TVs and the, and yeah, the right, visor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. With the PlayStation when I'm riding, right. playing TV. <laughs> Who plays PlayStation in the visor? Hey, we like, had it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about, dude. Yeah. So the, the, the Hummer with the, the the real one, the Army Hummer, was what I, was, was what I got, got first. the real tank. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell me how, how proud are you to have, you know, your, your, your daughter being a part of the uh, the Virginia Tech women's basketball program. And, yeah. you know, the women's basketball is booming right now, yeah. blowing up in, in real time right now. Like, how ball. proud are you to have your, your daughter, you know, following your footsteps, hooping and, you know, obviously doing it to a certain level, level where she'll uh, get a scholarship to v- VTech? Yeah, I mean, super dope, man, to have, you know, Karis be you know, on the Virginia Tech, they played last night. She was one for one and played 13 minutes to be playing on a ranked team. I mean, she's, as we alluded to, she light years ahead of where I was when mm-hmm. I was, you know, 19 years old. But it, it's super. I'm proud of all my kids. My my, my oldest son, Vin Jr., is playing uh, in Denmark. And and so, but to have Karis on be on a national stage, I think she's going to be tremendous. She She's already claiming the title as being the best basketball player in the family. Okay. So oh, she's got to she's got to <laughs> jump on <laughs> <That's> the <right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Being selected to the USA team, man, getting the opportunity to play with the USA team, all of us, it's like, you know, you you want to win a championship. You want to play with the USA team. You want to make the All Star game. How was it when you heard that? Like, hey, I can be a part of the USA team. I mean, oh, just kind of the same as a little bit different. Being able to represent your country, country. is different, man. Like, again, you can make an All Star game. You can even make All NBA, but to have the opportunity to be a part of a team that only 12 to 14 of us are selected. Yeah. You know, Tim Duncan, Alonso Morning, Vince Carter, yeah. Ray Allen, GP, Jason Kidd, like you talking about the elite of the elite at the time <laughs> in the league. So to be on that team and be- KG. Sele- KG, uh-huh. be selected on that team was over the top. My, like one of my greatest moments of being a basketball player 
had nothing to do with me scoring. I get to tell people I was there for the dunk. I was the just dunk. about to ask. I was there for the dunk. I was there for the dunk. What, was, what uh, was that yeah. like? That was. Q, I'm going to be honest with you because you're my little bro, right? My initial reaction, everybody in the world, I'm probably the one person in the world who's like, that's some bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> because it, you got to look at the footage, like Olympic points are hard to come by. Yeah. So I, I got the steal, yeah. tipped it to whoever, and did this to Vince. I pointed. Yeah. As he, true story. As he got, yeah. And went to, and, and did the, and did the, the, get the true, place. wait till you see it, and did this and did the gather D. And then, and so then he, he thought did, it was up. Yeah, I thought he was going to throw it up. And and that did not happen. I give Vince Carter hell about that to this day. Like, that was some selfish <laughs> mess that you pulled No, You could have threw that we, to get we, your boy. We out. needed that. We needed I did, that, though. Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> I and I played it off after. I screamed, too. But my initial reaction, I was like, that's some bull crap what you just did, bro. Seriously, that's one of the most selfish things I've ever how seen. Was the, how, <laughs> how was the locker room after the game? And like, how was just like the team like oh, after that amazing. dunk? Like, cause I know they they showed it like, like it was just that's one of the best dunks ever in the history of the game. Yeah, no, it was it was crazy. You know, you seen KG, yeah, you know, KG. you know KG, and yeah, you know KG energy, man. K KG's energy. It was it was crazy, man. Like, it was just. But the thing is, we didn't realize it was going to be so historical. Right. Yeah, the time. moment. You know, you you had some of the greats in the locker room, but it was it was crazy, man. Like at that moment, we hadn't really known what he did until we saw it on the video. Yo, I gotta go back and watch the footage. I gotta find it's this. a true story. <laughs> Q, you gonna die laughing? I asked for, the, I gathered myself and asked for the live. My initial reaction: was, That's crazy. That's crazy. You ain't throw that, V. Let me ask you this: Like, cause like y'all USA team is one of my favorite USA mm -hmm. team too. How was the practices? Oh, man. Like, cause like y'all had man, hit us. And they were talking yeah. about Vince Carter was the last one to get picked. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you a quick, a quick funny story, dude. We were in um Hawaii. That was where our training camp was, Q. And me and me and Zoe, I love Alonso Warner, man. Like, and we had we had some battles in our career. And so now we're on the same team. But our training camp was in Hawaii, and the first you've heard about Olympic practices, the first two or three, they just roll the ball up right, and you get yeah. to it. And uh, this one particular practice in Hawaii, I got to it. Like it was like I was going. And uh, Tim Hardaway was on that that team mm -hmm. too. And so the next morning, yes, I get to Chicago. You know, Timmy. So Tim get on the bus the next morning. I'm I'm not thinking any. I know I got to it yeah. right, and it was really kind of me. Last, it, right? Yeah, it was kind of me and Zoe locked up a little bit. And so, but I'm not thinking, we teammates. So I yeah. get on the bus the next morning and all I can hear Timmy say, yeah, you know Timmy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zoe at that ass today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what happened yesterday? I'm like, yeah, he really freaking attention to it. <laughs> That's him, yeah. And sure enough, and sure enough Zoe got to it that day. So yeah. it was cool, man. Like the practices were intense, but you know, I had, I had GP with me too. Yeah. So it was super intense, but it was super dope, man. All being on one cause, though, was cool. Let me ask you this. Your USA team, where do you rank your USA team out of all the USA teams? Man. It's kind of like, you know, you have you have the Dream Team with Jordan. Yep. You got Dream Team 2. You got the Redeem Team. Yep. You got, where do you rank that team yeah. amongst them? Historically, D, it's got to be in the top seven. Because you, you're talking about Duncan, KG. Mm -hmm. Peyton, Kid, yeah. Ray Allen. Like if you really go to, if you're doing like just lineup yeah. and not results, you're talking about Hall of Famers on it. I'm not, not talking about the first team, yeah. but you could probably go pound for pound or guy for guy um, the up there with them. the best of them. Yeah. And, and, and if you're talking about who's gonna compete against who, like KG and, 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 and KG, um, Duncan and Zoe on the front line. Yeah, I mean we go we can get with pretty much anybody. Steve Smith, Steve Smith. Uh, yeah, yeah, man, Smitty, <laughs> Allen Houston. Allen it, Houston. It was, yeah. We had some some guys. We had some go getters on the squad. That's what's up. Man, we appreciate it, Thank man. This you. is super dope, man. Yeah, the OG Van Baker pulling up on us, Family, man. man. Happy. Jordan brother, for sure. Yes, sir. <laughs> Family. <laughs>